Hello and welcome back to Nerd Doc. With Marvel's latest release, we have two Thor Love and Thunder post credit scenes to cover, which means there will be Love and Thunder spoilers in this video. If you do not wish to be spoiled, you can check out our spoiler-free review linked in the description below. You'll also find all of our other Love and Thunder coverage linked below, including videos explaining the plot and ending, a look at what's next for Thor and his new family, and where Jane Foster's story will take her next. As always, if you have any questions about the post credit scene, leave a comment below. Since Thor is still in theaters, we unfortunately can't show you actual footage of the post credit scenes, so please bear with us there, and don't forget to check out our Instagram where we post daily Marvel news and rumors. To better understand the post credit scenes, you'll need some information from the plot and ending of the movie. We'll cover it here briefly, but you can get a full explanation in our Ending Explained video also linked below. The first post credit scene shows that Zeus is still alive. About halfway through the movie, Thor tossed the thunderbolt through Zeus's chest, seemingly killing him. Of course, gods are not that easy to kill, and this scene shows that Zeus is still very much alive, being tended to by his Zeusettes. Yes, that's what they're actually credited as. Zeus is talking to someone off screen about what it used to mean to be a god, and how no one asks for help from the gods anymore because there are superheroes all around now. Basically saying that gods are a joke to humans, but they will soon fear the gods once again. As the camera pans out, we see that Zeus has been talking to his son, Hercules. Zeus sends Hercules on a mission to kill Thor, and the scene comes to an end. In the MCU, Hercules is played by Brett Goldstein, who you may also know as Roy Kent from the Ted Lasso series. We get into more detail about Hercules and how he fits into the MCU in another video that, you guessed it, is linked below. But for now, we'll just say that in addition to being the son of Zeus, the Marvel Hercules is very similar to the Hercules you've likely already heard of from Greek mythology. The Marvel version of Hercules is about equal in power to Thor most of the time. Technically, Thor should be stronger more often than not, but with the current state of Thor in the MCU, chances are they're about the same power level. At the very least, they should be able to fight evenly. Hercules is mainly a rival and occasional adversary to Thor, but he's been involved in a lot of stuff in the comics, even as an Avenger at one point. Suffice to say, Hercules is now officially in the MCU and will almost certainly be giving Thor problems over the next few years. The second post credit scene shows Jane Foster and Valhalla. Jane died of cancer at the end of the movie after helping Thor fight against Gore. Jane turned into gold dust, similar to Odin in Thor Ragnarok, which signified she would be going to Valhalla. As she looks around, wondering where she's at, Heimdall approaches her. He is in Valhalla now after Thanos killed him near the beginning of Avengers Infinity War. Normally people in Valhalla can't interact with the mortal world, but they can watch from a distance, which is what Heimdall has been doing. He thanks Jane for saving his son Axel and welcomes her to Valhalla as the scene comes to an end. The most basic explanation of Valhalla is that it's heaven for Norse warriors that fall in battle. In addition to Heimdall, there's a decent chance Odin and Frigga are around, as well as the Warriors 3, and maybe even Loki. Yes, Loki was evil, but since he turned into more of a good guy in Ragnarok and Infinity War, it's not out of the question for him to be in Valhalla. Although that may be confusing for general audiences, so Marvel might not go that route, or they simply might not show him the next time we see Jane Foster in Valhalla, which may be sooner than you think. Now we know what some of you are thinking. Yes, Loki is still alive and well in the MCU, with season 2 of the Loki series filming in London right now. But remember that the main MCU Loki died at the hands of Thanos shortly after Heimdall perished, and that would be the Loki who was presumably in Valhalla. The Loki in the Disney Plus series is a younger version of this Loki from the first Avengers film that escaped with the Tesseract and was hunted down by the TVA as seen in the first season of the Loki series. Either way, this is not the end of Jane Foster's run in the MCU. She will be back, and we've taken an in-depth look at what her future will likely be in the MCU in another video linked below. Hint hint, she's getting her own series, and there's a decent chance Valkyrie is going to die, at least temporarily. At the very end of the credits, it also says that Thor will return, but doesn't specify if it's Thor Chris Hemsworth or Thor Jane Foster. Obviously, both of them will be back. That wraps up our video covering the two Thor Love and Thunder credit scenes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and don't forget to leave your thoughts on Jane and Valhalla, Hercules coming to the MCU, and whether or not Loki is in Valhalla with Jane. Thank you for watching, 
If you enjoyed the video, please drop us a like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves Marvel and Thor.